How's it going guys? Panther Films and today we're going to be reacting to Season 1, Episode 3 of Secret Invasion. This episode is titled, Betrayed. Who's being betrayed? Nick? Because his wife is a scroll and he doesn't know? Maybe? The last episode basically dealt with the aftermath of the bombings at the end of Episode 1. And obviously Maria Hill's death, which was... Fucking insane. Well, I didn't expect that one. But we basically had her funeral. Uh, Nick Fury basically kind of like blames himself for her death. And he knows he's not the Nick Fury he used to be. And we also learned from Taylor that there's one million schools out there. And that just sent Fury over the rails. <laughs> and we also had a very interesting torture scene with Olivia Coleman's character, Sonya, getting information out of a scroll where she proceeded to cut off his finger, which we saw in very clear detail, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting on Disney Plus, to be honest. I just wasn't expecting them to show his finger being cut off, which I congratulate Marvel for that one. Hopefully Daredevil has that kind of like maturity or like at least TVMA, please. Because this show definitely seems a lot more mature compared to like other Marvel stuff in recent times anyway considering the last show we got was fucking She-Hulk. Oof. And we also have some scientists experimenting on something for the scrolls that involves Groot, Obsidian, uh, a Frost Beast, and something called Extremis, which I think is from Iron Man 3. It's been a while since I've watched that. I'm not too sure. I might be wrong on that one. But yeah, I assume Gravik's going to become this ultimate scroll with all these superpowers. And I don't know how Fury's going to beat that. And also, Rhodey fired Fury, which was kind of annoying. It makes me kind of suspect him as a scroll, but I feel like that might be a bit too predictable. I don't know. I mean, that about sums it up. So let's stop doolallying around with this shitty intro and get right into the fucking episode. Wow. Well, <laughs> nice cut. And then whatever they're doing. Also, isn't Extremis uh, the thing from Iron Man 3? I completely forgot about that. Also, does he know that meme actually came to life? Yeah, like the intro is so short now for the Marvel Studios stuff. Do you think it will work? Wait, what? Why did you join the Resistance? I didn't want our people to keep running. You joined the same reason I did. Not fear of the past. Faith. In our future. The thing is though, them doing this is going to give them more enemies. Uh, that's who they'll change into. Now is he going to get powers? I hope they don't make it so like he gets so OP that it becomes like a CGI fight in the finale. It'd be so stupid. Members of the council. Hmm. Glad we could make it on short notice. Only three members, though. Oh, four members. I sent three operatives to infiltrate the Royal Navy. God, it's so fucked. Wait, so they can make hats? When they transform, they can make a hat? <laughs> All of us. Super Scrolls. I'll invite you to join me. In the extinction of the human race. Oh, damn it, dude. Fuck this AI intro. Ass. New York City, 1998. I do like how they do, uh, like, what is it, the Civil War font? I like that we're getting some more flashbacks. Looking for someone? For Nick Fury. What does she look like? That depends on what day of the week it is. Hmm? Vara? This should put Dracov's men on their heels. Looks like they already have. This new face of yours is... Beautiful? Is it? The aging's looking better and better. How can you watch that poison? Even a broken clock's right twice a day. <laughs> Is it supposed to be soft or hard boiled? Poached? <laughs> Things cook differently up in space. I retired. <laughs> True. He was like on a beach in space. You been in touch with Gravit while I was gone? Okay, so he does know that, right? I became a widow in your absence. True. You came back in the blip. Yep. You just up and vanished again. Only this time it was voluntary. 
<laughs> I became me. Hmm. The me I was before. Why does it look like he's got like a four on his head? <laughs> a fantastic four? Something important? Nope. A flip him. What is it? <clears throat> What's happened? Brogan. Who? It's hard for Brogan to confess to something he didn't know. Brogan, under torture, he was forced to make an educated guess. Yeah, but for that guess to be correct? I'm a good liar. Why would you tell him that, that you're a good liar? <laughs> it was Brogan. He was weaker than you thought. I'll see you tomorrow, early. You coming with me? <laughs> Why would she say she's a good liar? <laughs> What the fuck? He's got a plane? Your father called for a party. Oh, yeah. The UN plane will be at Neptune's coordinates. 2200 hours. Neptune, 2200 hours. Statesman of World War One. That's yeah. what it's called. You see, because one lot spends the war posing for pictures, while the other does all the killing. Yeah, on the front lines. I choose blood all day long. Long. You asked for parley, so let's parley, shall we? Why does he say it like that? Parley. Parley. I remember this from the trailer, right? They have old schools. Why don't you just get an empty car? <laughs> Guy's in the car. Want to come say hello? You should be grateful that I haven't sent that back to you in a body bag yet. Oh. Yep. <laughs> They're old schools. All these miscreants know. Is murder. That's hypocritical. I'm gonna murder them all. Do you think I'm gonna let you continue this war under the cover of anonymity? You and your rebels will be put down like the rabid dogs you are. Then you'll be huh. ill. So then Gaia stays with me then, is it? Oh! My daughter's name stays out of your mouth. Ah! Wait. That was the extremist stuff, wasn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. This is yours. Thank you. Wait, was that like a plant? What was that? Oh, okay, it was Gaia. You really gonna eat that plate of dog food? <laughs> Just lost my appetite. Oh, that's the first. Have the balls to come up in here and ask me for help? Ask you for help? Yeah, not yet. I got a lead on a rebel scroll who's high up in the US government. Yeah, and, and what can I do for you? <laughs> How can I help you, my friend? I'm going to need you to, you know, use your words. Help me, Talos. Because <laughs> I'm useless without you. Not before you'd say, help me, Talos. You're my only hope. <laughs> Is he going to say it? Help me, Talos. Neptune is a British sub. I know who to call. A sub. Oh, she's back. <laughs> First, I want an apology. I just gave away the only one of those I had today. Nicholas Fury. He has a rather dashing little eye patch now. Oh, did she take out the eye? Can you make the call? Unfortunately, I'm dealing with my own infiltration at the moment. Somebody leaked the location of the butcher's shop. Wait, is that that guy from uh, Daredevil? That Irish guy? You know what? I, I don't get the whole dog thing. What do you mean? Name me one other interspecies relationship where it's acceptable to clean up the other guy's poop. I've been cleaning up your poop for the last 30 something years. Oof. So that's really what you think? Yeah. That the whole time we've known each other, you've been cleaning up my mess. Mm -hmm. You didn't start ascending the ranks until I came along. Me. You know, we fed you more dirt and intel. Then you could have uncovered on your own. But the one thing they couldn't uncover was that Hydra was inside S.H.I.E.L.D. You're a smart and capable guy, Fury. Nobody questions. It's not rewrite history. What'd you stop for? We're here. <laughs> Why's that? No, that's because you were too busy riding the... Uh, we did that wave. <laughs> There's a break from the old ball and chain. I can't empathize, sir. The ball and chain? What the boat? Do me a favor, Fury. Don't ever change. So I just left you. Nice. Well, that lasted long, didn't it? 
of all schools. Makes sense. Kid. What game is that? Some kind of racing game? Actually, it could have been GTA. Second floor. Last door down the hall. It's a trick. Bob got, um, Taylor's. Okay. Yeah. Nobody calls me Nick. Yeah. Bob. This is not a negotiation, Bob. It's a demand. Well done, Bob. Thanks for saving my life, Yuri. No problem, Talos. Anytime. <laughs> this has to be a mistake. You are obliged to strike. Take a sip of this. Is it going to help calm your nerves? Just drink it. Are you going to kill my dad? No, I'll just drink it. Oh, look at him. He's not the one who's going to have your wife scraping your purple, goopy brains out of a carpet. <laughs> you couldn't protect yourself coming through that door. True. You got a code for it, Commodore? You created this vacuum. All graphic did is fill it. Can't he get his, like, memories, though? Or does it not work on... schools? Enough of this bull! Oh! He's going full Pulp Fiction. Prepare to launch. You can't even keep your daughter's loyalty. Or is she the spineless traitor feeding you information? Yep. What the fuck? Do you, does this guy know the code? I need his launch termination password now. This is risky for her. Good evening, friends. Cognitive guy. Well, what can we do? Well, what's she gonna do now? Like, she has to get out, right? Gravik's gonna find her. Okay, they've got the uh, higher ups in the government. Wait, so I wonder if his kid knows about the scroll. Probably not, right? Abort. Exercise. Code word? Zachary. Abort launch. Okay, good. Oof. Yeah, she needs to get out of there now. Gravik's gonna stop her though. Because we haven't seen him yet. I'm not with Gravik, because I'm with you. Hmm. Pretty easy to understand. <laughs> This is too easy. Because Gravik's got the powers, right? Yep. That plane would have been valuable. Finding the traitor. Okay. There's a trap. Turn around. They're not gonna kill her. Are you a leader of scrolls? Or a worst enemy? Oh! She's not dead. He shot he shot like her. Wait, what? She's dead? Nah, that's gotta be a trick, right? She's alive, she faked it. Yeah. She's gonna sit up. Unless it fades to black. Wait, she's dead? So is she working for Gravik? What is it? A gun? Okay. For who? Kill Nick Fury, right? I need to speak to Gravik. Yeah, well, you're talking to me. Yeah. Yeah, that was another solid episode. It just sucks it was shorter than the last two, for some reason. Because we've only got six episodes, and one of the episodes is below 40 minutes, just about. I just don't want the show to feel rushed towards the end, like every other Marvel show, other than Loki. Loki had a somewhat satisfying finale, but obviously they teased the season two. But every Marvel show so far has always had this very bleh finale. But hopefully this episode was just a dud, in terms of like length and next episode and episode five and episode six are longer. But outside of the episode length, this episode was really good in itself. The writing, the dialogue, the character work, it's just good, you know? I like slow paced shit like this and then it starts ramping up towards the end. That's what I'm talking about. So yeah, Varv has been tasked to assume kill Fury or um, maybe Talos. But, who was the voice on the call? I need to speak to Gravik. Yeah, well, you're talking to me. It's Rhodey. That sounded like Rhodey. Isn't that a bit too predictable, though? That he's a scroll? Oh, but that makes so much sense. Because last episode, he called Fury Nick. And Fury in this episode said, nobody calls me Nick. But didn't, like, Cap call him Nick? Does that mean Cap was a scroll? I've called him Nick. 
So does that mean I'm a scroll? But like, now the question is, if Vodi is a scroll, like that is the definitive answer, then when was he taken? Because we've established that the scrolls take the humans into these like weird pod things, right? Was Vodi taken in Civil War or Endgame? Personally, I would prefer Vodi being taken after the events of Endgame because wouldn't it be weird if a Skrull version of Vodi attended Tony's funeral and was there when Tony died? Like, I don't know. It rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. Like, I hope Vodi was actually there and then after the events of Endgame he was taken by a Skrull at some point. But, I guess it could also be a decent arc. Like, Vodi comes out of the cocoon or whatever and then finds out Tony's dead. So based off every episode that we've had, we've established that Skrulls need the humans in like some kind of stasis. But wasn't Talos like his human? He just put in a basement somewhere. What happened to that guy? <laughs> um, I think what his name was Keller, right? I'm just gonna like sidetrack to episode one for a second. But Everett Voss was a Skrull in episode one, right? So does that mean Everett Voss has been captured? Maybe? Because how would the Skrull know that Everett Voss is on the run? I guess maybe memories, because I think we've established that they get recent memories from the person they impersonate, right? Now, speaking of Skrulls impersonating people, who is Gaia impersonating? Because if Gaia's dead, then surely the human version of who Gaia was is still out there, right? Or at least, like, in one of the cocoons. Because Gaia's human form didn't just come out of thin air, right? She had to take someone captive, take their memories, maybe, and then impersonate them. Because if Gaia's dead, and that was the only role that Amelia Clark was playing in this show, then that's such a waste of her talents. Like, she has an opportunity here to play two different characters. A human, like, whoever that human could be, and Gaia. But Gaia's dead, and if Talos finds out that Gravik did it, he is gonna go on a vampage. However, he might not win that vampage, considering Gravik's got powers now. And one of them powers being extremist, so he's basically unkillable. Funnily enough, though, all the powers that Gravik has is kind of like an element. Right? Like, the Frost Beast is, like, water. Right? Groot's power is like Earth. Extremis is fire. And... And then you've got Obsidian, which is more strength, right? So I guess it doesn't really work, unless there's another, like, creature that he's become that has, like, air powers. So maybe that's what they're going for. It's kind of weird that we skipped him getting the powers. It's just like, oh yeah, he's got the powers, or at least some of them. But yeah, last episode didn't click for me that Extremis was from Iron Man 3. It's been a while since I've done, like, a huge MCU binge. Like, Iron Man 3 is good, but, like, I don't know, it's a while ago since I last watched it. So, like, that little detail of Extremis, I completely missed last episode. But yeah, last episode's questions have been answered, kind of. Fury does know that his wife is a scroll. Pretty much immediately, <laughs> it was answered for us. So at least that's good. However, does he know that she's on the bad side, maybe? And working for Vody's scroll, I guess? Maybe? So that kid in Bob's house, Zachary, is he a scroll? Because if not, they just left that kid with basically his dead father and a bunch of aliens all over the place. But you'd think the scrolls would take the kid too, right? But they never really established that the kid was a scroll. So maybe the kid was a human and he's just going to be completely confused as to what the fuck's going on. But yeah, I really love watching Fury and uh, Taylor on screen together. The chemistry between them both is fucking insane. It does seem like Samuel Jackson's really enjoying playing the character a lot more. But to be honest, this is the most we've seen of Nick Fury in Marvel at any one time. Because he's only in like a handful of scenes in like the Avengers films and stuff. But here he gets to be center spot, which is great. But yeah, like I said, really enjoyed the episode. We'll have to see if Vody is a scroll. I'm 50-50 on it because it's like, it's too predictable, but at the same time, like, 
it would be cool to see and find out like what happened to Vody and when he was taken. But then it's a question of will I like when he was taken or not? I don't know. Yeah, I mean that about sums up the shitty review. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys, and I will see you for the next one. Ta-ta! And fair.